Now, when materials are being purchased, they are going to be recorded on the tariff side. You already know that it's a key account, it is a form of account which is called as key account. The debit side, credit side, debit side, credit side, debit side, credit side. Materials, the nature of materials is an asset. And according to rules of debit and credit, asset increases goes to debit. Asset increases will be recorded on the debit side. So when raw materials are being purchased by a manufacturing company, they are going to record on the debit side. The journal entry would be materials debit and accounts payable or cash credit. Mostly accounts payable credit. We are not concerned with that. We are concerned with the materials, the debit of the, the, debit of the materials. Materials will be debited whenever it is being purchased by the we will, we, will, we will record on the debit side whenever materials are being purchased by the manufacturing company. So rules of the according to rules of debit and credit, asset increases goes to debit. So whenever materials are being purchased, they are going to record on the debit side. And as I have stated you earlier that raw materials after having purchased from the supplier are being stocked or put in a material store room. This material will be credited when it is being utilized, when it has been gone to the working process, to the factory for the production. In a factory, the clerk or the supervisor sends a document which is named, which is named as a requisition document. The clerk or supervisor sends a requisition to the controller of raw material store room saying that such and such amount of raw materials such and such quantity of raw materials are being demanded in order to start the production. So on the basis of this requisition, the material store room keeper sends raw material to the factory. So when merchandise has been sent from material store room to the factory, or work in process, it will be credited. It will be recorded on the credit side. So direct material, we have talked about what are direct materials. When our direct materials are being utilized, are being shifted from the material storeroom to the factory, to the work in process, it will be recorded on the credit side. Because again, rules of debit and credit applies over here. Rules of debit and credit says that asset material is, material is an asset. The nature of material is an asset. Asset decreases goes to credit. It will be recorded on the credit side. The, anti, the general entry would be work in process debit and raw materials or materials credit. You see this, the arrow shows that direct material use. It is being shifted from the credit side of raw materials to the debit side of exactly the same as which have been passed in the general general. Work in process debit, materials credit. Whenever raw material whenever raw, raw materials have been used or shifted from the raw materials to room from the working process it will be recorded on the credit side being decreased in an asset. Materials, the nature of materials is an asset. The nature of work in process is also an asset. 
One asset decreases, other asset increases. This asset decreases, it is going to credit it. it is, this asset increases, it is going to debit it. This is the flow. You see how the cost flows from one asset to another asset. Next, payroll. The second component, the three major components of the cost of production are raw materials, the direct material, the labors, and the factory overhead. There are three important ingredients of a total manufacturing cost. You must be born in mind. Now moving over to the next ingredient, payroll. The second ingredient of our total manufacturing cost. Total manufacturing cost includes three things, three parts, three major components. Some material used, labor, labor, and factory overhead. So moving over to the payroll, payroll means labors. The amount of money which is spent, which have been earned by the labor or employees. Labors again are of two types. As that of materials. Like materials, direct materials, indirect materials. Likewise, labors are of two types. Direct labors and indirect labors. We also have to understand what is the difference between direct labors and indirect labors. So the direct labors are those labors or those employees which are directly involved in the production, which are working on the machines, which are directly involved in converting the raw materials into finished goods. These are direct labors. In a manufacturing, in a furniture companies, all those employees who, who are engaged in cutting wood and assembling them in order to make chairs, tables, these are direct materials. They are the direct labors, sorry. In a textile companies, all those employees who are engaged in the, uh, the converting of uh, cotton or the fabric in the, in the, uh, in the cloth, who are involved in sewing, in cutting, all are these direct labors. 